And so, with firm grasp, he seized the helm of the drifting ship of state and took command of the darkest hour the nation had known for generations. A real American with three centuries of inspiring family tradition and brain and blood. President Roosevelt can trace his love for the soil and rural life to his first ancestor, Claus Martens and Van Rosenfeld, and to 1649. That was a memorable year when the family came over from Holland and settled in New Amsterdam. Our president's branch of the family later moved up the Hudson to Dutchess County in the year 1818. And there the president first saw the light of day on January 30th, 1882. The home of his boyhood with its comfortable frame colonial house 500-acre farm, his little change from the days when he was a babe in his mother's arms. Sarah Delano Roosevelt is the president's mother, a lovely and gracious lady whose old American family were merchants and whose fast clipper ships raced to and from China in the romantic tea trade of the 60s. In the old Dutch Bible, she recorded the birth of her son, Franklin. And one wonders if she ever dreamed that the baby of three months she held in her arms would someday place his hand on that same old Bible and take the oath as president of the United States. It may well have been, for Sarah Delano Roosevelt may have had in happy motherhood the strange vision that sometimes descends upon the mothers of only sons, an instant's glimpse behind the veil of the future. And we have a word for it, that Franklin was an active and ambitious youngster who invariably assumed the leadership of his playmates in their boyhood sports. Even at nine, there is visible in his face the poise and confidence that goes with leadership. Brought up and educated in sane, simple, and thrifty ways, our president passed from boyhood into youth and entered the second cycle of his career. At 18, well grounded by private tutors, he was ready for university training and entered Harvard and paid his first respects to the man who founded this great university, John Harvard. He became editor of the College Daily, the famous Harvard Crimson, writing with a vigorous hand and putting pep into the once staid and conservative sheet. Franklin Roosevelt left his impress at Harvard. He was a good mixer, a member of many social clubs, played football and was a member of the varsity rowing squad. Many a time he tugged to the sweep on the beautiful and historic Charles River, scene of the great annual boating duels between Harvard and Yale, and cheered with the crowds on observation train and shore as the crimson of fair Harvard and the blue of old Yale battled it out in one of their historic regattas. Childhood, the president has loved the water. At Harvard in those boat racing days, he began to acquire his wonderful naval library. There was a thrill of combat in those races on the Charles, which was dear to the heart of a real Roosevelt, a fighting Roosevelt. And even today, men who went to Harvard with Franklin Roosevelt recall his charming personality, his vigor and enthusiasm, his ability to get things done. He was a vital figure in all Harvard activities. Here we see him with his senior class group, and the time was close at hand to bid farewell to Fair Harvard. Out of college, he turned to the law for a career and entered the law school at Columbia University. And while absorbing Blackstone within these walls, he married Eleanor Roosevelt, his distant cousin, and a niece of President Theodore Roosevelt. As a young lawyer, he began his career in a time of change and tumult. The economic and social ideas of the country were changing rapidly. One of the seething movements of the period was the demand for the vote by women and the stirring campaigns of the suffragettes. 